Hello, good afternoon. You're watching Market for Dafat on ET now with me, Vinny Motiwala, along with me, Shell. This is as well. Shell, a very good afternoon to you as well. Last time we checked, the markets were quite subdued. Any sort of help coming in for the markets? A clear Monday blue on the D Street today. Uh, Monday blue on the D Street, uh, Vinny, not just D Street, actually across the globe, the markets have been pretty weak. You mm-hmm. saw the Japanese market also see a sharp downtick. European markets have also opened a week. So it looks like it's a. Monday blues hitting across the globe. But let's take a look at what the markets are doing at this point in time. As you can see it on your screen, you have Nifty that is actually uh, seeing a down to about three tenths of percent. But apart from Nifty, let's take a look at what the other sectoral indices are doing at this point in time. Because you have the advanced decline ratio that is very much tilted in the favor of uh, the declines as of now. So you have about 100 and 1,741 yeah. stocks that are actually declining as compared to about 541 stocks that are actually gaining in a trade. Let's take a look at what the broader markets are doing because the pain in the broader markets is much more when you compare it to the rest of the markets. So take a look at the small cap index as you can see it on your screen. Let me just move aside. Uh, you can see it on your screen. The uh, small cap index is down in excess of 1%. The pain in the small cap index is much more that you're seeing in the mid cap index. And one of the reasons also could be, Vinny, that you had commentary yeah. coming in uh, from the SEBI chairperson earlier this morning and uh, did indicate that there could be some sort of cross building up in the market. It's better to act before that actually builds up. Apart from that, spoke about also the uh, stress test for small and mid cap uh, uh, funds actually and uh, as given the timeline on that particular front as well. So in fact, let's hear out what SEBI chairperson only is saying on that particular front. The format of a disclosure which has been approved and that is mandatory. That's not optional for any mutual fund. They will disclose. I think the date is... 15th mark. So the stress testing, so let me explain. So what does stress testing mean? Okay, and what is the purpose of stress testing? The purpose of stress testing is to assess that if there is an adverse environment, so first of all, there must be stress in a stress test, otherwise what's the point? Right? So if there is an adverse environment, and what? how is that adverse environment defined? We have discussed with the industry as saying that if there is a significant redemption pressure, because what is the biggest risk that a mutual fund scheme runs? The biggest risk it runs is that it is a daily redemption product and the underlying market may not be that liquid and therefore how do you deal with redemption pressure? Okay, that was a SEBI chairperson. Cheryl, I believe that was the reason that that small cap also saw a further sharper yes. fall coming. Also, she made, did, did make some com- uh, commentary on the SME IPO market hmm. also. And that's why you have a, a BSE SME IPO index. That, that also, also saw a downtick actually uh, post uh, the comments coming in. Also, it's uh, coming in from the regulators. Absolutely. So, keeping an eye out on that, you know, a bit of an uh, pressure that we've seen today on the markets as well. Nothing exciting. But uh, let's move on to an ET now exclusive then. And uh, government is gearing up for a big announcement for guaranteed uh, treatment of road accident victims. Now, sources are saying that the government may announce a scheme for the guarantee of golden hour treatment in which uh, costs will be borne by the insurance company. Anurag Shah is going to be joining in with us to give us more details on that. Uh, Anurag, what are these details that are actually coming in on this front? Soon, government is going to start a golden hour treatment facility, a cashless uh, uh, hospitalization treatment facility for road accident victim. So, for road accident victim, the golden hour, the first 60 minute is very crucial. And if you get a, a tr- treatment uh, during first uh, 60 minute, uh, uh, precious lives can be saved. 50% of life can can be saved as per uh, data. So, uh, th- this was a provision in uh, Motor Vehicle Amendment Act. Uh, but now government is going to implement it uh, first on a pilot basis very soon it will be started in state of Haryana and uh, uh, Chandigarh and later on it will be rolled out uh, pan India uh, so uh, 1.5 lakh rupees or seven days of hospitalization uh, cost will be borne by the government and for the, the, this the fund will be created and uh, insurance companies uh, general insurance companies will contribute in this fund 0.5% of their third party uh, premium will be contributed by insurance company uh, so now government is looking for 100 crore rupees which will be uh, uh, initial fund and the all non life insurance companies uh, will contribute th- to this fund 0.5% of their overall third party premium so uh, this is a uh, for 
पीपल ऑल्सो इट्स अ वेरी बिग डेवलपमेंट वन पॉइंट फाइव लैख रुपीज और सेवन डेज ऑफ हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन कॉस्ट कैशलेस ट्रीटमेंट विल बी बॉर्न ड्यूरिंग द गोल्डन आर ट्रीटमेंट फॉर रोड एक्सीडेंट विक्टिम्स Okay thank you so much for that Anurag but let's move on and get started with all the stocks that are buzzing in trade on the back of news flows and technicals and on the technicals we're joined by Aditya Agrawal from the research team we have Ankita as well as Ansh joining in with us a very good afternoon to all three of you all as well let me start then with the first stock that we'll talk about that's going to be Zomato back in focus again today uh, why because Morgan Stanley has come out with a note uh, there were a lot of media reports that came in so what the media reports were saying in terms of obviously Flipkart uh, seems like they're planning to launch a quick commerce offering and that's going to be as early as May 2024 a short while ago a couple of weeks ago we had heard Azepto has launched a subscription plan mm-hmm. as well so all this is coming in the quick commerce business which is the blinkit business as well which is growing well they've spoken about uh, in terms of the break even for Q1 FY25 as well they're projecting that adjusted EBITDA break even by Q1 FY25 but obviously competition seems to be increasing subscription plans that are coming into place as well the Morgan Stanley still is maintaining an over we are trading target price of 180 rupees per share is what they have given for Zomato and they believe that this marketplace will be relatively more competitive than mm-hmm. what we saw in food delivery because it's a duopoly in the food delivery yes, as, of, as now. of now as of now it's only that you know and it's a tough market to come in but quick commerce is where you're seeing the sharper growth coming in so yes competition is something that could increase in uh, the quick commerce place as well as for blinkit as well and uh, this is still in the nascent stage and near term is something that will be key to watch out for for all the companies as well and how competition actually shapes up plus you know meeting the target for blinkit for q1 fy right if i adjust it a bit is going to be key to watch out for as well so matter today a bit under pressure down 3% All right that is a matter for you and given the fact that uh, the blinket seems to be really working well uh, yeah. for the company and that is not what everyone perceived when and i that's why the run up actually yes. came up also every earning season we saw run up because blinket performed much better than what the street yes, was expecting absolutely. so that that's a matter for you today you have a backing coming in uh, from a brokerage uh, as well but let's put the spotlight on the tata group of companies uh, primarily tata chemicals because you saw a sharp rally actually come in about a uh, tata chemicals and also the rest of uh, the tata group of companies and why such a downtick coming in uh, uh, today for that particular counter because reports have suggested uh, that uh, the tata sons uh, listing looks unlikely in the foreseeable future and that's one of the reasons why you're seeing a sharp downtick coming on tata chemicals remember the tata chemicals actually saw a sharp up move uh, when he uh, last whole week i think about 36% odd uh, uptick coming yeah. in on that particular counter you saw rallies actually see a sharp up move you saw all of the tata group of companies actually seen the sharp up move but uh, now as you can see it on your screen uh, today tata chemicals is down about 10% and like the report suggested that tata sons is looking at ways to avoid uh, going public uh, next year as uh, mandated by the rbi so that's one of the reasons why the stock is falling in trade today absolutely keeping an eye out on tata chemicals let's move on chambal fertilizers and chemicals aditya that's the first stock that you picked out for us uh, good afternoon and what's the view on this one because last one month has remained in that uh, 360 370 range nothing exciting in terms of an up move in the last one month so you know is it time that one should start booking out profits because the further we've already seen a run up for this Uh, good afternoon, Vinny. Thanks for the show. Uh, I believe it's not the time to book out profits, uh, but rather it's the time to look at adding more in the portfolio. And if you don't have the stock in your portfolio, maybe you can look at it uh, <clears throat> even at current levels uh, as well, because it's broken out from a downward sloping channel last week on uh, extremely healthy volumes. And my sense is stock is good to test levels of three ninety five to about four hundred on the upside. So that's a decent upside that I'm looking at. Uh, also, if I plot RSI and MACD, both have given a positive crossovers uh, with their respective moving averages. And uh, as I mentioned, volumes are also healthy. So on the downside, uh, 370 to 365 is a good support area. So the risk to reward is also in favor of going long. So at current levels, I would recommend rather than booking out profits, look at adding to this uh, on your portfolio, even for trading bet at current levels for a target of 395 to 100 on the upside. Exactly. Okay, that is <laughs> jumble fertilizers. But on that note, we are going to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more stocks after this break.
welcome back. You're watching Market for Tafat on ET now, and we do have a new IPO that will be opening up for subscription today, uh, this uh, week, and that is going to be Crystal Integrated Services. And today we're going to be joined by the management. We have Sanjay Dege, who's the Chief Executive Officer and Whole Time Director at the company, joining in with us right now. Now, um, thank you so much, uh, Sanjay, for joining in with us uh, this afternoon on ET now. 300 crore IPO opening on the 14th of March. Uh, and believe there is two parts, fresh issue as well as OFS that's going to be happening for the IPO. Um, Sanjay, let's start by talking about the utilization of the funds. You've said you're going to be paying some amount of debt, working capital as well as some purchase of a new machinery as well that we'll be looking at. So could you tell us the division in terms of the amount that and how much is currently the debt on the books? How much will you be paying off as well? So thank you so much uh, for for uh, getting me on this show. Yes, 175 crore is uh, the fresh capital, and <coughs> uh, 100 crore is about towards working capital. Uh, the debt only we are we are trying to retire only 10 crores worth of debt, and 10 crore we have kept aside for uh, uh, fresh equipment purchase, and 55 crores is for GCP general corporate purpose. So that is a very simple bifurcation of our objects. Uh, about the what we are going to do with this 175 crores. Right. Uh, uh, if you could uh, exactly uh, talk to us, uh, Mr. Sanjay, this is Shadal also joining in the conversation. If you could uh, talk to us about uh, what your company actually uh, 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 entails, uh, what, which uh, segments you all are present in, and also how is the competition scenario in the segment that you are in? Okay, so we we are we are we are uh, India's largest company in terms of uh, integrated facility management services. Uh, we are largest in terms of the our service portfolio. Uh, we are also one of the fastest growing companies in this zone, and uh, uh, also we are the most profit making companies in this zone. So now, having said that, we've been in this business for over two decades now. Uh, our our, uh, uh, our uh, mix in terms of sector is government and corporate. Almost 70% of our customers come from governments and 30% from corporate. And we are a pan-India company uh, with almost 21 branches. Uh, we are also very proud to say that we are one of the largest employers in the country because all our services are through man, machine and material. But our valuable manpower is about 40,000. So we take a lot of pride that we support 40,000 families in the country today. And uh, our, uh, our services are uh, very typically a IFMS uh, service bouquet, uh, which is uh, security man guarding, uh, facility management, janitorial, housekeeping, facade cleaning, pest control, garden maintenance, horticulture, pantry services, staffing, payroll, so on and so forth. So it is a very, every infrastructure that is, whether it is a government or corporate, what it takes to actually keep it up and running in the best possible manner is the range of services that we offer. And uh, <clears throat> we have about 316 customers uh, uh, nationally and gives me a lot of pride today as we are on the verge of uh, coming up with our IPO that uh, almost uh, we have uh, some of our customers are with us for even two decades like Phoenix Mill uh, with us for 20 years, HDFC Bank for 15 years. Uh, we are also servicing some marquee customers like uh, the Metro Rail, National Cancer Research Hospital, PD, Hindu, Hinduja Hospital. So our range of sectors that we are present is also very, very wide. It is airports, uh, airports, educational institutes, railways, uh, warehouses, manufacturing units, and so on and so forth. You know, uh, Sanjay, well, let's talk about a bit in terms of the numbers as well. What we're seeing in the last couple of years, you're in that growth range of 20 to 20, 20 to 30 percent. Mm -hmm. Is that something that is sustainable or would you expect uh, upward of 30 percent? That is something that one could see from the company going forward as well. Yeah, we've grown at a 21, 22 percent CAGR and we will continue to do, do that. And uh, I am very confident and the confidence comes from a couple of things and predominantly uh, uh, as per the FNS uh, report, the IFMS outsourcing in the government sector, which till 2023 had a growth of almost 10 percent, is estimated to grow at 16 percent, 16.2. Uh, 16 
at the same time the corporate business is also going to grow and both these estimations are till 2028 so that gives us a great opportunity for growth i think we are in the right uh, business in the right sector at the right time and at the right place so it is going to be a good going for us and we will continue to grow similarly historically we have grown uh, at 21 22% at the same time at the ebitda and pat level also uh we i am very confident that we will continue to achieve similar the we will maintain that trend all right then all the best for that mr digge thank you so much for joining us on et9 all the best for your ipo as well and uh, look forward to interacting with you once uh you are done with the ipo as well as listing that is mr sanjay digge of uh, crystal integrated services talking about what the company exactly entails the competition as well as be confident of growing uh, or seeing healthy growth going ahead as well but with that let's uh, get back to the stocks that are actually moving into or on the radar of our uh, technical analyst aditya coming back to you icici prudential how is this one looking to you on the charts because of late we did see some sort of uh, life come back in all of these uh, uh, life insurance companies isn't it Uh, absolutely Cheryl and I believe it's time to look at these life insurance and general insurance companies uh, specifically talking about ICICI Pro I believe uh, this is one stock which still has uh, further legs on the upside it, it's broken out from a cup and handle pattern neckline and a sustained trade above uh, 605 606 uh, can actually uh, fill up or further up move in the stock can test levels of 700 as well so that's a big up move that I'm expecting on the stock with an immediate uh, target of 650 and then 700 Uh, and plus, if you take a look at the way the stock has been moving off late, it has been forming higher highs, higher lows. Uh, plus, technical indicators are also suggesting a bullish up move uh, for the stock. So overall, the structure and the setup is very bullish. I believe it's time to look at this stock uh, for a target of at least six fifty to about seven hundred on the upside. Okay, keeping an eye out on six fifty to seven hundred for ICICI Pro. That's the word coming in from Aditya. But on that note, let's just slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more stocks after the break.